Thank you, Father God. Lord, we just magnify your name this morning. Lord, you are El Shaddai, God Almighty. You are Jehovah Jireh, the God who is more than enough. Lord, this morning we come and we exalt your name. We exalt who you are. Lord, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for everything that you're going to do in the name of Jesus. Let's just say this. Say, Lord, I'm ready. What you're gonna do for what you're gonna do today, today. in Jesus, Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen.
I just want to encourage you as we give that he gave everything. He gave everything for you. Let me share with, with you what the Lord, what I, what I was praying. Last night I was praying and the Lord was just sharing with me. You know, we have a tendency in our culture and in our world to hang on to things. We hang on to things and we gather things and we, we, we bring our stuff, our collections and our things. You know, sometimes when people die, it's a real pain because their family has to get rid of all the junk they've collected over their lifetime. So don't let that happen to you. comfortable surrounding ourselves with things that make us comfortable. <coughs> we just want to make sure that we have enough, and so we collect, and we gather, kind of like a squirrel. All right, but in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, the Bible says, I've showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it's Jesus who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now let's say that. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So another verse 
In 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. You got any cheerful givers out there? Cheerful givers. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that you ha how always having all sufficiency. Amen. Amen. You don't have to worry. You don't have to collect. Hallelujah. You don't have to gather. You need to be giving. If you right. release what you have, the Bible, <laughs> the Bible will bring it in for you when you That's need right. it. Have you ever seen somebody that collected like egg cartons or, I mean, if they have hens, laying hens, that's fine. But those plastic spoons from Hardee's and Burger King, and some people have a whole drawer full of those things. Well, I might need them. You know what? Let's trust God. Let's don't be so, let's release things and learn to let go and learn to sow seed, the whole principle of sowing and reaping will be working in our lives and we'll have enough when the time comes that we need it and we'll also be able to bless somebody else so i just want that mentality of releasing to be in us because we all tend to be selfish we got our stuff and we collect <coughs> i want to challenge you this week to give something away something valuable to yourself not just like a can of peas or something like that that doesn't matter but give something of value to someone else release it release it begin to be a person of sowing so that the harvest will come in if you don't plant you aren't going to have a harvest that's just the way it works yeah. so anyway enough of that but i want to just share with you this one of the ways we can overcome selfishness in our lives is by giving. 2 Corinthians 9.9, 9, as it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Selfishness is defined as devoting to or caring only for oneself served primarily with one's own interests, benefits, welfare, etc., regardless of others, characterized by or manifesting concern or care only for oneself. We are not selfish here. We are givers. We are, we are seed sowers. But I just want to encourage you, along those lines, I believe the Holy Spirit uh, just shared that with me. Excel in strength, 
who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. We're going to bless the Lord today with a song, with a new song. You're going to enjoy it. So if you would, please stand.
for the gifts. Oh, he said he came and he gave good gifts to men. Oh, we thank you for healing that. Oh, we thank you for salvation. Oh, we thank you for healing. Oh, you're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And to Him be his word. God loves his word. And uh, what you're singing there was the word of God. And uh, we always have to honor the word and give him his first place. This is what he said. This is Romans 11, 36. For of him and through him and to him are all things. There's not any of us that have the right to live for ourselves. We were made for his purpose. Yes. We were made for his pleasure, not our pleasure. No wonder the world's so messed up. No wonder part of the church is messed up too because they're seeking out what they want. Not what God wants. You want to find the place of blessing and favor and happiness? Forget about yourself. Forget about yourself. You can be delivered from yourself. You know? A bunch of us need that. Sometimes I need to be delivered from myself. You know, you're not the most important thing in the world. You're not the best thing since sliced bread. I'm sorry, you're just not. And when you get down to it, you got a greater purpose. For of Him. In other words, of Him. My God, the reason we have life is because of Him. The reason we exist is because of Him. And then He said, not only of Him, but He said, through Him. Who's He talking about? Jesus. That's who He's talking about. Through Him. And to whom? And to him, my God, all uh, says in John and, and then in Colossians, all things were made for him. And there was nothing made that was ever made. Oh, amen. It's such a privilege, such a privilege to honor God, to honor his word. God says this, John says this, he says, the one that honors me, him will my father honor. That's right. You want respect? You want honor? Then honor God. Honor Jesus. That's the way respect comes. I like respect. I like honor. But it doesn't come without honoring Him first. 
Where's my respect? Nobody loves me. Nobody respects me. Or, well, maybe you're doing the wrong thing. If you seek for your own honor, oh my goodness, you're going to have trouble. I don't say that you're doing that, but I just want to admonish you. Let's get our mind focused on why we exist, why we are here. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God loves you so much. You are so blessed. Yes. Say, I am loved. I am loved. I am loved, I am loved. By, the Father, by the Father, by the Son, by the Son. and the Holy, Ghost. the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. That's loved. Do you feel loved yet? Yes. Glory to God. Then you can be seated. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. Aren't you glad you don't live in Texas this morning? If you're upset about the rain, thank God you don't live in Texas. In fact, I want to pray for Texas right now and those people that are down there under that. They've had uh, 24 inches of rain in Houston already. They're expecting up like up to 40. And the uh, uh, only place I ever knew it rained that much was a place up north of us in Africa. And we live several hundred miles from that place where it was. And uh, in the middle of the, the dry season, in the middle of the desert time, all of a sudden the rivers would fill up. And it was from water that had rained hundreds of miles north and just filled up hundreds of miles south when there had been no rain for months. But let's pray for those people because they need the mercy of God. Father, we pray for Texas this morning and we pray for them and we ask you to intervene on their behalf. We ask you to help them tonight or today. We just thank you that today that the rains would dissipate. We command the rains to quit. We command the rains to stop. We command the weather to cease. We command you to cease. We command you to cease today. And by the name of Jesus, we pray for mercy for those those who are flooded, those who are hurt, those that are damaged, those that have had great damage, and I pray that you would make intervention for them today in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. You know, a lot of times people have needs, but the only place you can really get your needs met is God. You know, I'm not responsible to meet people's needs. Sometimes people call a church and say, I have a need, and I say, well, come Sunday morning, and they never show up. They're looking to have their need met. And they don't know, and I'm going to point them, that I'm not the one that meets their needs. The church isn't the one who meets your needs. It's God who meets your needs. And if he speaks to us, I'll help you. But if he doesn't, I'll pray for you, and God will help you regardless. I've had people come and ask for different things at different times because they wanted assistance or things. And the Lord said, no, don't give it to them. Pray with them instead. And I prayed with them, and just right away, somebody that they knew turned around and blessed them and they got an understanding that God could be their source, not man, not the church. Everybody say this, God is my source. God is my source. Glory to God and he's able to bless you. He's able to bless me. Who say he's able to bless me? Oh, that's a good thing to say. He is able to bless me. Whew, I like that. He is able to bless me. He is able